Hi, hello, MRK here, and today we're gonna do something actually quicker and faster than my previous videos, except the one about uh, editor preferences, because that has uh, three minutes. Uh, but today I was playing a bit with shaders again. I know I was supposed to make more blueprints, but, but hey, I was... Uh, I was just interested in, in a topic and I thought I would pursue it. So here we are. Today we're making a fog of war. Mm, this was on my mind for a, for a while and I actually got better with shaders. Uh, because, you know, I made a metaball, I made volumetric fox and combining knowledge from those two topics actually enabled me to make a fog of war. And uh, yeah, the fog of war will be useful in in my project that I'm making. Uh, it's it's not this project. This is just just a test project, but it you know, sh shows it nicely. Mm, so first thing first, there are multiple methods of making fog of war. Uh, there is one I'm gonna show you right now, and the second that I'm gonna also show you, but not on the uh, low level so the first method is to yeah use use uh, volumetric fog and distance fields what i will be explaining uh, later and the second met method is to use uh, post process and depth uh, custom depth so um, why am i not using post-process method because at first it looks nice so we enter the post-process of course it can be an infinite extent but only if you want it in the whole game right in the whole level so we have a fog and uh, we do it in the post-process material and we exclude some objects we have custom depth enabled, like this thing. It has a custom depth. If we disable it, then it disappears. If we enable it, it appears. But there is a problem with that method, and that is actually when we move to the left, it's still visible, and I don't like that, <laughs> you know? It, it, it's not something I would want in my game. Uh, I'm sure I can utilize it better and, and just do a workaround and, and all that stuff. But I decided like, hey, maybe, maybe post-process is not for me. I would like to have a nice fog on my map and have a player move through that fog and it disappears when he moves. And he also can have allies that um, will also be visible through the fog. So yeah, instead of the, the lame post-process <laughs> method, of course it's not lame, but uh, it's not for me right now. I decided to make a volumetric fog and uh, use distance fields. And I was using distance fields before uh, while making metaballs. And you can check that video in the description. It's a very nice video, uh, uh, my first, <laughs> honestly, uh, proper video. And uh, I'm utilizing distance fields uh, there to modify the vertex data of an object. So it acts like a blob. And here I am actually pushing uh, something out, but still using distance fields. Uh, so maybe a little showcase how that works. We have a fog, which is a, a normal volumetric fog. This is just uh, a mesh. Where is it? Fog cube. This is just a mesh with a volume material. And you have to also, uh, you have to have the exponential height fog and enable volumetric fog for this to work. If you don't enable this, it, it, it just won't work. So exponential fog, this is just a mesh, a material. 
and we have some objects that are using distance fields and when we move them the fog disappears right pretty pretty cool and this one does not affect doesn't <laughs> does not affect affect the fog god damn it english stop bullying me um so how did i do that simple yes distance field field lightning this one does not have this enabled this one has so if we enable this here then we can also use the fog and i also made some options so we can um steer uh, with uh, controls you know make the fog a little denser maybe more clear and stuff so first thing first maybe let's start from the bottom we have a banner so a simple time times uh, vector we can make it super fast if we wanted to but we can also make it stop so yeah this is all knowledge you should have from my video about volumetric fog using strata i mean i am not using strata right now but it's it's not such a big difference it's mostly the same uh, so, so you could also watch my and my uh, fog volumetric fog video i'm also gonna link it in the description and then we have a color we can change the the color it's all basic stuff then we have uh, noise size so how big is the noise uh, we got hole size so how much should the object affect and uh, the, the the fog let's leave it at 300 whole clarity so basically at zero we don't have any clarity so that the whole doesn't work <laughs> and the whole purpose of this video doesn't work so so leave it at five or at five or if you want to actually make a an actor that is making the fog more dense then you could use minus five and and yeah <laughs> that's a, a foggiest fog but let's leave it at five because that's the point and for clarity so the rest if we make it five then it's it disappears if we make it one then it's very very clear it's like little clouds floating and if we make it minus five then it's that it's again the foggiest fog so let's leave it at zero zero i think is pretty cool and that's all the options so a little bit of tweaking you can do not too much and let's go to actual code and i'm gonna explain you how to make it again it's it's super super simple let's start with the top <laughs> this time we got a color so uh, a 4 for the vector but yeah uh, well yeah actually we are using four because there is also alpha right uh, so color to albedo super simple and uh, then we have the actual fog so absolute world positions or the pixel position of a certain you know element of the fog we get distance to the nearest surface again from my metable video you can learn a, a little bit more and uh, we check how far from the distance field the particle or the the pixel the element of the fog is uh, we get the size um, whole size so it's it's a parameter and we check the distance with with the hole if it's a bigger than than the hole then we spawn a fog fog clarity at zero zero and if we um, if, we, if we get closer to the distance field then we make it one so clarity nice and full and of course you can tweak it right here then we minus one or one minus 
uh, to invert it because it actually with the current settings works like that you don't have the fog everywhere except at those two circles and uh, where am i and yeah that's <laughs> that's basically it you can use that uh, pin that to to extinction so the opacity of the fog and and that will work and but i am also using some noise and some panning so i'm getting this subtracting uh, b and uh, b is this so panner you all know that just time multiplied by vector and we add it to the pixel position then we divide it by the noise size and plug it to the position of vector noise i'm using parallel in 3d noise but you can of course use whatever you want or you know a, a volume texture you can also use that but then you have to use uh, uvs or uvws because it's a volume texture uh, but i am not using this i'm just computing it myself <laughs> well the, the engine is computing it for me and uh, yeah that, that's the whole code and it works pretty nicely i might say so let's move maybe to the implementation because yeah, I, I showed you the effect. I showed you uh, how to enable um, the interaction with fog. So, so just this. But if you want to actually use this system in the game, it's not as simple as affect distance field lighting because there is no such option <laughs> in the blueprints. So let's move to character base. And this is just my uh, my base class for for NPCs, right? It's not a player. Player is floating in this actual game. It's floating. And actually, we can play a little bit this game. It's super super loud. Let's maybe. Uh, decrease it in volume <laughs> a lot okay it, sh it should be fine now so let's make a few warriors let's spawn them and yeah they're using distance fields so very nice it works and uh, yeah let's let's move on so why would you use a fog of war First example is probably an RPG game where you have some characters in your party or in your squad or team or whatever it is in your game. And you are exploring the world. Let's say it's a top down and you steer with your NPCs or with your characters and... Uh, yeah, you don't want to see what's uh, what's outside the view range of uh, such character. So you just use a fog, and every character would use affect field lightning, and everything else <laughs> would not use it. But what if you want to have something dynamic, right? So Mm, you have a character that is hidden, but you can recruit it to your party, to your squad, team, etc, etc. And uh, only then you would use distance field lightning. So let me show you. Mm, we got a mesh, for example. You can also use this for, for RTS, strategy, game or whatever. And then you would use a static mesh. So for static mesh, we can do uh, affect distance fit lighting, but we can all only get it. So we cannot set it. And that's a problem because, of course, it won't uh, work in run runtime with dynamic characters. So my solution to that is to actually on capture, I made an example for uh, for capturing a, a settlement 
you would actually spawn a static mesh actor that is like for example this tree you can enable this in uh, in static mesh editor that is using um, distance fields where is it field yeah i think it's, it's, it's that option so just generate mesh distance fields so it's enabled and then you would take that static mesh component say set of course to that static mesh you you made and then we want to hide it so it's invisible uh, in the game because we are not setting um, the distance field for the actual mesh but we are setting it for a new uh, mesh that we are adding to that character so we kind of fake <laughs> the distance field um, effect right so how how we hide it well we can't really make it with visibility because as you can see, this object is using distance fields, but if we uh, do visibility off, then it loses that, that field. And it's same with uh, hidden in-game. Oh, let's, uh, let's set visible and hidden in-game on. It also hides uh, the distance fields. It's, it's no longer using it. So what's the solution? <coughs> it's actually a solution from, uh, from that method. So using post-process for, for a fog of war. But we are using just, just a one small element from it. So how do we hide a, an object without actually, you know, hiding it, uh, its effect? And the, the answer is, is to actually disable rendering in main pass. So there is an option, not here, we need to, we need to enable this. There is an option called main pass, render in main pass. And if we disable it, then it no longer renders, but it still has an effect on the game. So let's disable it. And the second thing you you can see the the object is black but that's because it's still using uh, the depth pass so we tick the render in depth pass off and then we have an invisible object then it's just cast shadows off and we have an invisible object that is still casting uh, that uh, field um, distance field and then yeah you would spawn it add it to the middle of the character, set the collision off, of course, and disable rendering with those options. So just off, off, and you're good. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, honestly, it's been quite, quite fun to make uh, this Fog of War. And... Uh, where is that cylinder? I wanted to move it here. Yeah, it still affects it. So yeah, um, that's it from me. And uh, until the next video, bye bye.